12, 14. Oh my God. Look at that, y'all. That's what you do. Louisiana's taking good care of them fish. Big shout out to John B for joining the dad crew. Much love. Big shouts out from one dad to another. You're going to love it. Let's go. All right. What's up? Welcome back, bitching and bassing crew. Welcome to another episode of the Flippin' Fishing News. And before we go any further, I just want to shout a shout. I just want to give a big shout out to the social profit because yes, that man is letting us use his studio. That's where we are shooting this. Obviously, this isn't the B&B headquarters. So just want to give a, oh, I can't talk today, but I just want to give a big shout out to the social profit and his new YouTube channel, the social profit show. I'll put it in the description. Make sure you go check it out. He's got a ton of dope content over there from music to uh, everyday news to top tens. I mean, he's got everything. I'm sure there's a piece of content over there you'll like. So make sure to check out the description and go check out my boy, The Social Profit Show. But enough of that. Let's get in to this week's episode of the Flippin' Fishing News. All right, guys, we are back with another episode. Like I said before, just want to give a big shout out to the B&B family for making the first episode a success, at least to me. I, I, I'm a, I love that you guys liked it. Big shout out to my man Dave for getting in the comments. As for the rest of you guys, get in the comments. Let's talk. Remember, this is a fishing community. That's the whole point of this show is to kind of, you know, share my love of fishing. So if you guys got something to share, make sure to share in the comments and I'll get back to you. So again, big thanks to y'all for making the first episode a success for me, at least enough to make an episode two. And we're going to keep this thing going because of the B&B squad. So let's get in to today's episode of the Flippin' Fishing News. And dad is the theme of this episode because we have a very new, very important fishing dad in the industry. So before we go any further, let's get into fishing. We had two major tournaments go down again guys, obviously one on the MLF side and one on the Bassmaster side. We're actually making this video a day later because we had to wait on the MLF tournament to get down over on Lake Fork. So, um, but before we get into that, let's start with the Bassmaster Elite Series. And once again, they were in Florida, that's right. First tournament was on the St. John's. This tournament took place on the Harris Chain of Lakes. Uh, they launched out of Leesburg, Florida. and. This was expected to be a, a, a heavy hitters tournament. Um, I know a lot of guys were expecting to be up shallow, looking for spawners. We were looking for 30 pound bags, thinking it was gonna take over 100 pounds to win this tournament. But in the end, guys, that's not what happened. It actually ended up being won by an offshore angler. And this is a, a, a Tennessee local, a Tennessee native. Uh, uh, that ended up winning it so it was definitely a big surprise i know a lot of guys were talking that uh the lakes on this chain of lakes that usually do produce like lake harris used this and uh, uh lake griffin that they weren't a player that this time lake apopka a lake that almost is never a player when they when it comes to tournaments on this lake at least major tournaments but lake apopka was the difference maker uh, I know uh, a lot of anglers made made their uh, money in Lake Apopka or in the surrounding canal. So, um, and the guy who ended up uh, winning the tournament was Buddy Gross. That's right, guys. I don't know why I didn't say that before, but yeah, Buddy Gross is an offshore angler that's known for throwing his Carolina rigs, his crankbaits, just basically fishing offshore, like throwing swim baits, stuff like that. And that's how he won it, guys. He he ended up fishing uh, some abandoned shell beds, these shell cracker beds. Um, I know he was throwing a swim bait here and there, but what won him that tournament was throwing the Zoom Z crawl worm on a on a, a Carolina rig. So um, that's just an old school thing. Said his he hated a Carolina rig until his dad got him into it, and now that's how he makes a lot of his money. And besides like the six XD, I'd say the Carolina rig is up there in the Hall of Fame for like, you can never go wrong with throwing a Carolina rig. So. Big shout out to Buddy Gross, and he, he ended up winning the tournament with like just under 78 pounds, like 77 and some change, I think, won it. Um, we had a lot of changes uh, on the leaderboards. Uh, I think Brandon Lester led day one, uh, Buddy Gross led day two, and Roy Hanselman Jr. led day three. And then, of course, Buddy Gross won it on day four, but it was, like I said, guys, it just ended up being a weird weather. I mean, they were on a warming trend, but I think with the weather before, it's just kind of throwing these Florida fish off. So uh, that's why we didn't see such big weights. Um, 
but all in all, it was still a great tournament. They said these last two tournaments were some of the biggest uh, crowd showings that, like, to the weigh-in, like, actually physical people showing up. So that's awesome to see, especially you know coming out of the pandemic. So good to see Bassmaster Elites going strong. So, but um, like I said, yeah, guys, it wasn't as a spectacular tournament as people expected it to be, but we still had a ton of huge fish caught. Uh, Cliff Perch caught something just shy of a 10 pounder. I think I showed it to you guys on the end of the last episode. Now, even though Buddy Gross did win the tournament throwing offshore, and that's what a lot of guys had to end up do is, you know, fish offshore or fish deeper water than they were used to, uh, especially when fishing Florida this time, uh, the second place winner, Drew Benton, ended up uh, doing that. He ended up I'm not doing that. He ended up doing what we thought was going to be done by a lot more. And he was solely fishing spawning fish and he was throwing a top water. He was throwing a little prop bait over beds and he ended up putting together enough weight to come in second overall. So he almost won it. So, but that freaking Z craw worm on that Carolina rig brought Buddy Gross that $100,000 check. So big shout out to Buddy Gross. Uh, if you don't know his story, it's a pretty cool one. I know Dave Mercer, the announcer for Bassmaster Elite, just sat down with him and did a longer podcast. So uh, make sure to check that out. You can kind of hear his story. He started with like nothing, like five grand in the bank. And he, I mean, Buddy Gross is up to like five or six major wins in like five years. Like that's that's such that's awesome like that's that's like really showing you there that like it can be done you not only can you survive by fishing professionally you can thrive like buddy gross big shout out to you dude hopefully you win a ton more so i uh, also want to give a big shout out to david mullins too he came out with uh, aaron martin's colors and his jersey this year so um as you guys know, Aaron Martin's passed last year, so that was a pretty cool thing to see. Um, I know a lot of guys got the stickers, the RIP stickers for their boats, but David Mullins actually is rocking Aaron Martin's colors. I think that's pretty cool because, I mean, if you know fishing, you know Aaron Martin's pretty important to the sport. So, once again, RIP to God. Uh, rest in peace, Aaron Martin's, and big shout out to David Mullins for repping them colors. So, um, and before we get off the Bassmaster Elites, you just go over the top 10 real quick. Got to grab my notes real quick. Obviously, we had Buddy Gross coming first, Drew Benton in second, Hanselman Jr. did end up coming in third, um, some other David Mullins finished in fourth, Scott Martin came in tenth, and what do you know, one of my favorites of all time, John Cox, has another strong tournament and comes in at seventh. Uh, we got Kenta Kimura, another Japanese angler, coming in the top 10. Kenta Kimura finished ninth, and uh, I'm pretty sure I heard his camera guy say that he probably smoked a whole pack of cigarettes before noon one of the days. So uh, he was out there chugging, puffing, catching fish, man. Uh, and old school, even Greg Hackney ended up coming just outside the top 10 and 12. So um, that's about it. It for the elites, the Bassmaster Elite this week on the Harris Chain. Um, as you know, we have the Bassmaster Classic coming up, so uh, I'm pretty sure practice started the day that we were taping this, but um, the actual tournament's still about a week out, so um, we will definitely be doing a Bassmaster Classic special uh, after that's all said and done. So that's it for the elites in Florida. They move on from here. So real quick before we get off the Bassmaster Elites, I just wanted to go over the standings for angler and Rookie of the Years. I know we've only had two tournaments, but just to kind of keep you guys updated, leading angler of the year so far, we have David Mullins, number one, my man John Cox, number two, and Micah Fraser, number three. Uh, some other notable names in the top ten, we have Brandon Lester at, set, uh, at eighth, and Scott Canterbury, uh, 2018 or 2019 angler of the year, he rounds it out at, at ninth. And for Rookie of the Year, um, on the Bassmaster Elite side, we have... Uh, Jay Perscurret, I can't say his name, I'll, I'll put it up, I can't say his name, we'll, we'll put it up on the screen, and Masayuki Masushita are the two, and also we have Matty Wong coming in at number six for Rookie of the Year, and if you guys don't remember Matty Wong, he is last year's 2021's Opens champ, and uh, he actually had a pretty good event, so rooting real big for Matty Wong because he's doing it the hard way. Uh, 
like literally fishing, you know, the lower tournaments to the opens, and now he's finally made it to the big league. So big shout out, Matty Wong. Hopefully he finishes the year strong. And um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over those stats with you guys. I had them written down there for you before we got into the MLF. So let's get off the elites and jump into the MLF, which their their stage two event took place on Lake Fork. We actually had to. Uh, wait a day to record this so we can bring you the coverage on this event which there isn't much of yet because it literally ended like six hours ago um, but again it's Lake Fork guys so there was a ton of big bass caught not as much as you would think but like I said the weather has been these cold fronts Texas and Florida and, and like the weather has just been different these last couple years but it did not disappoint tournament wise we actually had an awesome championship round um, I know day three, I can't remember if it was A or B, but I know one of the days was cut short due to weather, so I know that kind of threw some guys off. Um, Jacob Wheeler came out and had a killer first day. I think his first fish was like seven or eight pounds. Make sure to go check out Jacob Wheeler on uh, Instagram. I know he put his first day weight card up there and like, that boy went out there and crushed him the first day, but he did not win. Uh, we actually had a pretty cool, he did place pretty high, but Jacob Wheeler didn't take this one. We actually had um, a father-son duo in the championship round with one of them actually taking the cake, and it was his first ever major win. That's right, two weeks in a row on the MLF side, we have two first-time ever winners, and that's right, it was ended up being Alton Jones Jr., and uh, his father, Alton Jones, was also fishing against them in the championship round, which is pretty cool. Like, I don't know what else would be cooler like than fishing against your son, which Alton did. That's freaking cool, dude. So um, that was a pretty cool event watching over there. I know, like I said, they had a day cut short due to weather. The, the weather was kind of all over the place. But I know they, they were catching them, even with the weather. They were catching big ones on crankbaits. I know DC, Dustin Connell, had a 10-pounder. Uh, one day so I mean the fish were there it's just I don't think any one person was able to put together you know one of those crazy 30 pound days even though they fish different on MLF but um, like I said I know Jay Wheels and, and Alton Jones he had to, he had ended up uh, capitalizing on that shortened period I think that's really what kind of pushed him and kind of uh, gave him the momentum into the championship round and he ended up taking on the kick so Big shouts out to the first win, and like I said again, the father-son thing is pretty cool. Who else doesn't want to win, not only win 100 grand, but do it against your father and rub it in his face like that's, he's going to be able to hold that up there. That's going to be a special trophy in that household for a long time, but again, big shout out to uh, Alton Jones Jr. and Bradley Roy, two first-time winners on the tour, two times back-to-back, -back, so that's pretty cool. Um, some other notable top 10 winners we have from the Lake Fork event. We have Dakota Beer, Bar, Bear coming in second. I know he had a killer uh, day one day. He caught a bunch of big fish that kind of put him up there in the top 10. Jacob Wheeler finished third. Casey Ashley fourth. Uh, Alton Jones Jr.'s dad, Alton Jones, finished fifth. And some others, we had Jonathan Van Dam, son of Kevin Van Dam. He finished seventh. And Justin Lucas finished eighth. Um, now, they have their version, MLF does have their version of the Bassmaster Classic, but it's actually going to be at the end of uh, March, so we'll do a special on that as well. That's not till the end of March. Obviously, they're going to wait till the Bassmaster Classic goes, and then they do the Red Crest. So, the Stage 3 uh, MLF event is going to take place on Lewis Smith Lake in uh, Alabama. So, that would be cool. That's always a... a a popular lake. I know it's a very storied lake. They've been going there for a while. I know the Bassmaster Elites have been there, been going there as long as I can remember. So um, that should be a good event. So when that goes down, we'll be able to bring that to you. So, but like, yeah, like I said, I wish I had more MLF stuff to bring you guys, but I am still kind of catching up to the whole MLF way of catching fish. So, but when we hit that stage three event, we'll make sure to bring that coverage to you. So, guys. Alright guys, like I said, that's it. That's all we have for MLF. Sorry, we'll bring you more on the next one. But I wanted to get in. We're wearing the hoodie. Yes, like I said, it's dad vibes. That's because on the YouTube fishing side of things, we had one of our top YouTube fishermen, John B, ended up 
having his child. That's right, John B is now part of the dad crew. So just want to shout out, big shout out to him uh, and his, uh, not wife yet, but the mother of his child, him and his girlfriend. Hopefully all is well, hopefully the baby's healthy. That's awesome, the John B fam is growing. So hopefully, I'm sure he'll have her fishing before she's too old, but um, I'm a dad, so I know that's awesome. I just wanted to let you guys know, John B had his kid, it's healthy. Go check out his Instagram. Um, speaking of John B, also uh, his trip, I told you guys before he cut that 14, make sure you go on YouTube, check out his channel and LFG's channel. They have that whole like OHIV crazy fish, it, all that stuff's on their channels. Make sure you check that out. Um, also, if you guys do want to kind of get more coverage on like you know, the Bassmaster Elites or like on that Lake Fork event, um, I know a lot of guys, if, if you have a favorite angler, most likely he has a YouTube channel and a lot of them guys do really well. Uh, kind of covering their day and kind of giving you the most information possible. I know a couple of notable channels you might want to check out. Scott Martin probably has one of the best angler channels like all around just quality wise and I mean he, he shows you everything. You'll see the travel vlogs to the fishing vlogs and all that um, and I know Scott Canterbury and Matt Airy are in it with him as well. They travel with him. Uh, the Ding Boys are on the MLF side. We got Jay Wheels, Dustin Connell, and uh, Mark Daniels Jr. They all have really good channels, uh, kind of breaking down their days, stuff like that. Oh, Brandon Polinek, he also has another good, I love watching his channel. He does a really good job of breaking down the tournament as a whole. So yeah, guys, if you guys wanna kind of get more coverage and kind of stuff, if you have a favorite angler, definitely make sure you check them out on YouTube. They definitely, most likely have a YouTube channel, so. Um, other things going on in the YouTube stuff, guys, we're getting ready for spring, so your tactical bass in, um, check out Fish the Moment if you haven't, those are all the, the channels that are kind of going to get you ready for your spring fishing, That's they, they solely focus on teaching, it's not really there for content, it's not like, their channels, they're solely trying to teach you how to catch bass, so make sure you check out Tactical Bass and Fish the Moment, it's a good time to get on, it's cold, you got a little bit extra time, they're going to help you catch more bass. So. Uh, and I also forgot to mention before, make sure you check out Jason Christie. Jason Christie actually just revamped his channel and um, he has a lot of cool videos on there. I like Jason Christie because um, he's always been one of my favorite fishermen. No one throws a spinner bait as good as him and Rick Clun. And um, he's also running an express boat. So he does a really good job. If you guys are interested in those aluminum boats, go check out Jason Christie Fishing. He does a really cool rundown of his whole boat, his whole setup. And uh, he has, I mean, spinner bait videos his whole channel is a pretty good breakdown of fishing so make sure you check out Jason Christie I just want to make sure to remember that because I know he just revamped his channel um, and other news on the YouTube channel I know Guggen the Guggen channel they had their they just had their biggest Guggen week so you want to make sure you check their channel out they're gonna have chan like when they do these Guggen weeks the videos kind of drop you know at least once or twice a week so make sure you check those out um, oh also, one of my favorites, one of my favorite fishermen who's been missing for a little bit, not too long, but SB Fishing, that's right. The Strykel Brothers Fishing, Matt Strykel, he's finally made it back to YouTube. And I love this guy's content just because it's so kind of like relatable. And uh, it's just like him, like there's not no big thing behind him. So I love uh, watching Matt over there on SB Fishing. He just dropped two new videos. So let's make sure you go check out SB Fishing. But other than that, that's it guys. I'm kind of just excited for the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, the, the Bassmaster or the Bass Pro catalog just came. Um, you know, looking at that, I could read that all day, even though I don't need anything more. But like I said, I'm excited for the Classic. We got some favorites. I know they want uh, Hank Cherry's a favorite to win. Jason, 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 Jason Christie, uh, Brandon Cobb, that's his home lake. So I'm excited to see what goes down on Lake Hartwell. So make sure you guys tune into the Bassmaster Classic next week. And then when it's done, make sure to check us out here because we're going to do a Bassmaster Classic special, y'all. And, and you just, just the Classic. So. Um, like I said, make sure you check us out here, uh, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like the videos, and um, we'll see you for episode three of the Flippin' Fishing News, y'all. Let's get it. If you guys want a bitch in the bass and sticker for the tackle box, or for whatever you want to, if you just want to rep, you know, the B&B &B squad, let me know, I will send you out a sticker. Much love. Like I said, we'll see you on episode three. Peace, bitch.